thanks for inviting me. I'm, uh, I started um, dealing with books during my studies, actually. I studied um, conceptual art and stage design in relation to sculpture work, and I realized very often uh, while I was working or finishing a certain piece that uh, there were documents left over which were not the work itself, but they were somehow the only thing which was there. And so I started to rethink how to deal uh, with documents like this, how to uh, make it possible to communicate my own interest in art, and how could I, um, you know, um, maybe find my own way how to, um, um, to deal with this phenomenon I experienced. And so I started making books, and as you know, publications has been always um, something which were produced next to the artwork. So um, the fact that you were focusing on, a, on text or on a publication were not really the, the thing uh, a gallery or um, a curator were looking for. At the time when I uh, started, I was studying in the mid of the 90s. Um, and um, so anyway, um, but I think um, publishing is a, basically um, a consequence of a concept art which started in the 60s or maybe even earlier, already in the 20s when you think of Marcel Dijon. And um, so in that case, I had the feeling um, in relation to uh, the new media which started about this time, um, that it would be a good idea to focus on a media which is actually not in focus at all. It has changed, as we know. It became a real boom, and nowadays we can say that after the uh, internet became a mass media, the book was empty, and the art world, or the artists, but not only artists, also um, people like um, uh, combinations, you know, groups of people, graphic designers, um, writers, creators, everyone was starting to rethink a, pub, um, a book as a medium to use to communicate certain interests. That's actually how it started. And uh, so also like your interest, it's not, um, hello, no, it comes and goes. Uh, it's interesting that you make artist books, but you're also interested uh, in books, artist books made by others. It's nice to see like how you work with uh, other people's books. So this between your own individual bookmaking practice and your interest in other books, so it can in mm -hmm. a more collective way. Maybe you can tell us more, and we can yeah. talk about Salon yeah. uh, for Kunst. So my interest started from the beginning, actually, to look also at, uh, at and in 2007, maybe that's more. Um, better to understand. In 2007, I decided um, to change my studio into a, mo into a model of a bookstore, which meant to me that I um, emptied the whole space. I painted it in gray. You will see some images here in the back. This is a 3D scan uh, from the studio after five years. And at the beginning, I had no publications in at all, but I, um, I told myself to focus on one um, on one aspect or one uh, physical moment, the book as an object, but also the book as a medium we have been using for 600 years, we have been developing, it became our own culture, it became the way how we were actually discussing, um, um, but also describing life uh, in general. Um, and so I was uh, starting to collect publications, I opened my studio, uh, with kind of opening hours, and I tried to involve other artists, writers, critics, but also curators and people who came from art the theory or art history inside this um, laboratory. So you could say normally a studio is always a kind of laboratory in which you try to uh, find out things so I collected books, and after a while, people thought it's a kind of bookstore because uh, there were a possibility to bring books, but to look at books, but also to buy some of them. I set up certain rules um, because uh, I wasn't interested to sell all of it. 
And, but the selling point was important for me because I didn't want to become a, a, an exhibition space, what we call an off space, or a, a gallery, or a bookstore, but also not a library. So I created a kind of hybrid in between, which um, I tried to, um, to fill up with all kinds of information from all over. Um, so I was also traveling, meeting people, uh, doing a research uh, on the relation between um, book and uh, different interests uh, as an artist. And um, well, I ended up creating a kind of um, environment in which people could experience the multitude of um, publishing, which actually means the multitude of artistic production. So there is a lot of different um, expressions, but there is never a lot of copies. I'm using, just because of the images, I'm using often uh, 3D scans for a space, because this space doesn't exist anymore. So to, uh, to save a certain situation, and to make it possible to revisit it in a different way. So maybe my question is on the f this physicality of the book shop, of the book, um, the Salon for Kunst book, or the, yeah, your project that becomes like this bookshop slash library. I mean, your project, it's like a sculpture, a library that becomes a sculpture, or it's like a, this, this collection of books that becomes a sculpture. Sometimes, and sometimes it's scanned, and sometimes it's reproduced as textiles. And so, like, maybe you tell us about when you are not in your studio and you're invited as an artist to go to other places and present or put together artworks, uh, or put together like a presentation of sorts. Uh, how do you, yeah, how do you deal with this um, impossibility of carrying the physical thing and producing, or maybe, yeah, just tell us how do you take your uh, project outside mm -hmm. your own studio? Well, basically for me, there is always a relation between the object, which in that case is the book, and the space. Mm -hmm. So I really like to deal with space in itself. I was always doing, building uh, furniture uh, for spaces, and um, I was always interested in how people actually can um, experience um, those kind of publications uh, in a different way um, by creating a certain environment. I made this experience like in 2011, uh, the Austrian Belvedere, which is an institution, art institution in Vienna, they uh, became interested in the piece because they um, reopened uh, um, an exhibition space and they were looking for something which is not a shop in a traditional way, maybe you know, museum shops, um, they have a certain function, they are kind of important for institutions also to show what they do. Um, but the director of the Belvedere, she was interested in to get something different, something, a new step, and she said in the 21st century, we would like to try uh, a step forward. So they asked me to install um, this kind of it installation and to rethink my studio work and to transfer it or transform it into something which works inside an art institution. So what you transported to the museum is basically the hybrid form, which is a, a bookshop that used to be a bookshop, but not a bookshop, your studio, but not yeah. a studio, or a private space, but also a public space. This installation that you created in your studio, you transported this to the museum, right? Uh, yeah, not in the physical way, because the institution had a certain uh, architectural expression. There were no walls. There w everything was made out of glass. Uh, and it was an interesting building, so I created a kind of 12-meter-long um, wall, which um, I put in the middle of the space and I created uh, small islands in which you could actually look at publications, sit or stand or look in a vitrine or look to the wall, things like that. So visitors would uh, use it as a library, but they can also still buy uh, maybe... Uh, yeah. But also you were, you were organizing like a public program. So who are you inviting to, the, to yeah. this place? Well, basically I started in this space uh, with zero books, like in my studio, and then it became um, 
interesting for a lot of artists in Vienna um, because um, it's, it's a very noticed place, so people come there and so they wanted to present their own work in terms of showing their catalogs, the publications. So I was starting to collect, 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 collect and uh, were bringing my own rules into this situation, which also created an interesting uh, conversation between people who are used to buy things and people who are, uh, um, uh, realize that they can't. But it was then later on I, I started uh, doing exhibitions in the space, uh, doing uh, uh, talks. We had, like for six years, we had every second week a uh, presentation of a publication. So you can imagine this became very intense. And I tried to use this uh, opportunity of the space, it was about 200 square meters in the institution, to uh, make my own interest in the medium uh, public, but not only mine, but also the relations with a lot of other people. Because what you do basically when you look at books, especially uh, art and artist books, you start looking at the meaning of what the book is about, and then you start discussing. So it's a very good uh, opportunity to discuss uh, artistic questions by looking at publications. That's what we do anyway. And I think with this uh, also movement outside your studio comes with um, like when you are in new spaces and you are receiving books or you are arriving at a place where maybe you are there also to understand what sort of books can also come to you from these uh, new spaces. Uh, it was interesting when we, were f when we first worked together, you said I work with certain, I, like you have a set of colors that you work with and you have these theories and new ideas of, of, or like your own ideas, let's say, of how do you organize a book, sh uh, book sh like books on shelves or, you know, according to color and, and or like sometimes how you were also collecting books that are on drawings. And so maybe you tell us also maybe on this, like being prepared to receive, uh, you know, as many publications that can be as different as they come. And also, find ways to show these very small objects, you know, and such always like sculptural interventions in exhibitions mm -hmm. or events. Well, when I started um, in 2007, I used, uh, um, I, I, after I finished my studies, I, I mixed my own colors in a form that I decided to work in the future in a certain way that I'm not trying to find a color every time I, um, I'm trying to do something, instead of using colors I really like. And so I have a color range of blue, I have a color range of gray, of red, of green, of a lot of different colors. It sounds simple, but for me it was a good opportunity uh, to go back every time I have to uh, work on something, I'm just using my own color code. And in relation to books, uh, I started after 1,000 books, uh, collecting 1,000 books, I started color coding because I was interested in, um, uh, um, in the impression. What does it do if we only collect, if we only show red books in a block? Maybe you saw one of the images. There's one image uh, where you see red and white books. So I thought it was interesting for me to see also the relations. When you uh, do books as an artist, you, d you, you choose colors for specific reasons. Um, and so uh, every, every book looks different because very often uh, the artists are uh, doing the graphic design or the way how it looks themselves. They work very close together with graphic designers and printers. So then every book looks different. It's not like a publishing house which has a certain line and then you have maybe different colors, but it's uh, creating a different um, expression and by um, bringing those publications in color uh, orders uh, you create a new uh, experience and I was quite surprised because some people told me in the of course my colleagues told me some of them okay it's a bit weird why do you sold by color this has no meaning but then other people told me, okay, this is, looks completely new to me. I had never have been looking at so many yellow books uh, at one time, and it creates a, a, a certain impression and a different interest because you get, um, you like to, um, you have a first of all, you have an aesthetic impression, and second, this makes you 
get closer and try to find out. And I kind of like this way of work in which you uh, experiment also with the material. So I'm using this, those publications for new works. I don't change them in terms of, you know, cutting them or taking pages out. I never do that, but I'm, I like to, um, to use them for installations. Well, maybe we talk about the two works and the exhibition. So there's the project we can start with, the No ISBN. So how did it start, this project? Well, in 2009, I did a, a kind of poster performance at the PS1 in New York. And uh, this was actually only meant as an expression of what I had in mind. Uh, so I, um, I had about 400 posters glued on cardboards and were using them for this performance. And then a lot of people took photos of these posters. And on the poster was written, there will be one image here where you can see it. It was written, no ISBN. Uh, um, what was the text? I don't remember. It was an open yeah. submission for art books. So basically, I was art asking. Art books without an ISBN Without number. an ISBN number. I didn't know that in North America, they have this huge, and also South America, have this huge tradition uh, and a huge discussion because um, there is not a history like in Europe that the communities, uh, the government, and also private people give money to produce publications. So they had, they were actually the founder of fanzines that comes from America. And uh, by showing this expression, putting a no in front of the ISBN, um, I created a kind of, uh, let's say, synonym, where people started reflecting on and when I went back home, I got about 500 books sent it over to my studio. So I was really surprised. Even the postman was surprised. Um, and, uh, and that brought me back to the question, OK, what does it actually mean to produce without an ISBN number? Which what we called in the past the gray literature. So that was stuff which was not, not produced uh, by a publishing house. Uh, there were no editors. So everything was done by the people by the authors themselves. And then we, uh, in uh, 2019, around July, uh, you, there was a second, we, when we were putting the first iteration of this show, we thought maybe it's a good idea to uh, do an Arabic edition of No ISBN in order to also kind of understand what is mm -hmm. the gray literature that exists in the region and to have, uh, to put this open call out and to see what comes back and uh, so this was an interesting experience for all of us to see what kind of um, books we get back in, res in response to this call. But also, you you never just exhibit them like you create a sculpture a sculpture out of it. And I, yes. I don't know. The, uh, this is the English. Uh, this is the first. Uh, this poster. was the first uh, poster. Yes, and then there I think there is the second one. I was really happy uh, about the invitation to do that for the Arabic world, because it's, um, yeah, it's a new world for me. And uh, it's very different, also in the tradition of uh, printing and bookmaking and the relation to artistic. Uh, hmm? And also the, the language. Uh, and also the language, yeah. I think there's a real, uh, it's, it's a really new world. But you also got a lot of, uh, it takes one <laughs> a lot of books from the Arab world that were in English or in in French, so it's not. Uh, you also get a glimpse into like that the languages used in this region, or by artists, are not just Arabic. That you get uh, different kind of uh, languages, yeah. like the books that came back to us. So the the you will see some images from the exhibition in Beirut. We got about two hundred, I think, bank. Yeah. I don't know. No, this I is the wrong. This. this was at the art institution. Um, so we got about two hundred books um, sent it back from actually all over the Arabic world. It was uh, really interesting uh, material, also things uh, you won't find. Some were published with a publishing house or an institution, but the most was uh, self-published in terms of uh, NOAA SPN, but also self-made. I think what was interesting in, the, in this installation also, when people came to visit the show and they realized that they have publications that could be within this uh, you know this collection and they would remind us sometimes or like they remind themselves also and like mention to us oh and the work on of of so and so and it was really a very interesting moment of kind of uh, 
undocumented cataloging, let's say, of uh, of such practices in the Arab world, where uh, yeah, we're we're just like th coming to uh, to see the examples of others and just realizing that you're part of a larger community. And this is what we're trying to do in in the two and the different iterations of this show is basically identify who's like us, uh, since we have this publishing initiative, Kaifata, and we have it's an independent initiative, and so we do uh, like many. Uh, uh, struggle to get an ISBN number or partner with uh, others who would uh, with part with like institutional partners that would overshadow us or other th uh, or do this was the invitation yeah. uh, exactly. for Beirut. But from this, all of this, we were also interested in translating your book, which uh, no ISBN, and uh, yeah, in which you have done a lot of like a, a huge uh, survey of. Uh, of uh, of the of the topic of the of the practices uh, and of the histories that had led to uh, the emergence of such practices. So maybe you tell us a bit about the book and and uh, just uh, we're working to have this book ready uh, by f like in first week of February. Uh, yeah, and in Arabic, but it's already ready in English. But come back later, in like other days, to find copies of it here in the bookshop. Mm -hmm. Well, then uh, the publication was first published in um, 2016, uh, and it's focus on the um, on on different things. Uh, first of all, um, it's uh, it shows in the beginning a register of all the publications which I collected until the point where I started with the publication. So this is about 3,000 um, objects. And then I was, um, there are diff in the publication, I tried to construct something which is a mix between uh, information, uh, but also discussion, interviews, essays, um, the relation also to literature and music. Um, so, um, and focusing on, different questions which had to do um, with the history of bookmaking on one side, but also with the future, uh, which means the, the relation between analog and digital uh, publishing nowadays. Yes. So, yeah. There are several essays on yeah. different focus. Uh, like to give one example, tactility is a um, a more and more uh, getting an important issue, uh, not only in the art world, because people realize that we're working so much on screens nowadays that we lose actually the connection to those uh, uh, experiences, you know? And so there are different moments in the publication which tries to focus on a certain uh, aspect, also the idea of minorities um, presented using those kind of uh, publishing um, to present their own interests. Yeah, it it's really has a great range of, uh, of uh, entry points to the subject and also of, uh, of speakers. Like there's like uh, the interviews that you did and the essays, uh, some written by uh, artists who started like a book fair or some written by, um, yeah, uh, different kind of producers of, of, of these independent publications from different angles. Um, but I wanted also, uh, this is the No SBN installation in Beirut. Mm -hmm. uh, you will see, uh, so Bernard always also works in a very site-specific way. So when uh, the, this project came here to Warehouse, he uh, envisioned, uh, he looks at the space, he thinks of, of what does it mean to walk through the space and how to, re to reflect on that and react. So he uh, made a different installation for this project uh, here in uh, Warehouse. Uh, and also the other work that you're presenting here, uh, these two tapestries. Uh, but it's not your only work in textile. So I'm interested to know, like, uh, what's your interest in textile? And then if you can tell us a bit about the work that's here. Well, I think I was always interested in the material of textile because when I started studying, I realized that it had a very bad uh, reputation. Uh, so text, what we called uh, textile art in Europe was uh, the only thing you shouldn't do as an artist. So by um, looking at the material and by finding out different options and even using them, uh, I thought it's a, it's a great medium 
to um, to link, to discuss, but also to produce uh, new expressions out of uh, the work itself. But to give you one example, because you will see some images here, which is related to books. Uh, I'm, I realized in 2010, so after doing this for three years in my studio, that uh, a lot of books were stolen. And by uh, the fact that I had to pay all those publications uh, to the authors, I uh, became kind of mad and I was, uh, I, I, I just thought, okay, I'm going to use all this experience for new works. So I decided to weave um, the memory of those covers and to reproduce them in a different way. So I made about 56 different um, small tapestries made in Chakar technique, uh, which were, came out actually um, from the fact that they were stolen um, from my studio. Yeah, and that work was uh, also exhibited in Beirut. Um, but you also, it's the same technique, the Jacquard technique that's yeah. used for the tapestries here. So maybe you tell yeah. us a little bit what, what's special about this technique and then also about this work. Well, what interests me in, in Jacquard technique, I do those myself. I have a, a manufactory in France, uh, which is normally only producing for fashion, but uh, I met them and um, because I know how to do it, they. Um, asked me to come over and to produce it there. And uh, maybe you know uh, Chakar, he was an engineer in the late 18th century, and he constructed the first machine uh, to produce uh, tapestries uh, automatic uh, with a machine, which was very, very much work before. I mean, you have a tradition in, um, uh, in carpets, in uh, weaving, in um, the different ways of uh, knitting as well. Um, but I was also interested in the fact that uh, he created a machine which, uh, in which he uh, constructed um, cartoons with a hole. So he actually was the founder of Zero and One. And this does mean actually that this is uh, what we uh, call the computer today because it was the basic uh, uh, information or the basic step uh, he created by just by creating the machine, you know. So he found a way to lift each single wire and um, to produce a tapestry like that. And that's an interesting, was an interesting moment for me to use this technology because it's, um, uh, it's also, it, I mean, it's really related to our time, I think, and it will be even more in the future. And the two tapestries here are uh, show like 3D uh, scans of your studio space, right? Well, they show, what I was drawing from the 3D scans, because you can't print, uh, you can't weave directly a 3D scan, but I was working to create a certain aesthetic which is in between um, um, a drawing and a photography. Maybe it, shows, it shows basically two sides of the studio. And it's the first time that you exhibit them, right? It's yeah, it's yeah. the first time. So it's also interesting for me. So maybe we open the floor to questions. If someone has a question, uh, we can come to you with the mic. <laughs> yeah, there's no pressure to ask questions. We can also, Bernard will also be around, so we can ask maybe in a more informal way. Um, yeah, okay, thank you very much, Bernard. Yeah, thank you too.